In the first video on the subject of the animals, I discussed the fact that animals are made on the same day as human beings. There is a kinship between animals and human beings that is instructive for us. Not least, animals alert us to our own animality. There is something in us that is animal-like. We share many features of our existence with the animals. We sleep like the animals, we eat like the animals. Our bodies function in very similar ways to those of the animals. And this relationship between us and our animality is an important one for understanding human nature more generally. And so, this creation on the sixth day of human beings and animals alongside each other always reminds us that we have one foot within the animal kingdom. We are made in the image of God, but we are also like the animals. This connection between human beings and animals is also seen in the many kinds of animals. Throughout scripture, we have human beings, we have nations, we have types of persons connected with different types of animals. In the sacrificial system, there are certain types of animals that are clean animals and others that are unclean. There are animals that are set apart for specific sacrifices, for specific persons, and others that are set apart for different ones. The bull represents the high priest, the male goat the leader of the people. And these sorts of connections between persons and animals are instructive on both sides. They help us better to understand the animals and they help us better to understand human beings. Jacob can compare his sons at points to different types of animals. In chapter 49 of Genesis and his blessings, and also within Moses' song in Deuteronomy 32, there is a connection between human beings, between tribes, between classes of persons and animals. So the unclean animals are often related to the Gentiles. Later on in scripture, we can see this great sheet that descends from heaven in the vision to Peter represents different groups of persons. The animals stand for persons. The great nations, the empires that rise from the sea in the visions of Daniel, which we also see in the visions of the book of Revelation, these animals represent nations and empires. And the specific characteristics of the animals that they are associated with help us to understand the particular character of those empires or peoples. As we move through scripture then, this connection between human beings and animals is one that proves deeply instructive. The illuminating connections and also this commonality that we have helps us to understand what human beings are. And as we move into the New Testament, we can see this fleshed out in various ways. Heretics can be compared to brute beasts, people who are rendered insensitive to reason on account of their sin. We can have other connections between animals and human beings which are more positive. We can follow the example of animals that exercise providence, labor, care, and discipline and diligence. When we arrive in the New Testament, it is easy to think that all the analogies of the Old Testament fall away, that the connections between human beings and animals are rejected. We're no longer dealing with that sort of thing. And now we think purely in terms of human beings in abstraction from the animals. Yet this great sheet that descends to Peter is not just a picture of the collapsing of that imagery of the Old Testament, but it's fulfillment. The bringing in of all the Gentiles into the region of God's blessing means that these animals are now clean, whereas once they were unclean. This does not collapse the meaning of the animals, but it is a fulfillment of their meaning. As the domestication of these animals, the bringing of them into the household, these animals that were formerly outside, it means that the lion can lay down with the lamb. It means that the young child can play at the adder's nest. There is an overcoming of these great divisions between the animals, but not necessarily a removal of their symbolism. In the next video, we'll think a bit more carefully about some of the ways in which the animals can help us to understand ourselves.